In this question, we're going to look at how to use our graphical calculator to be able to draw the graphs of derivatives of functions. And what we can do is we can use the option button followed by the calc and the ddx. So what we will do, we will do the, use this feature on these graphs here to see how we can get the gradient function. So let's go into graph. So we need to use mode 5 and we've got a graph function and we need to type that in. But we're going to type in that we want the differential okay the derivative of this function okay so the gradient function so we're going to go press option which I just did then we're going to calc which is f2 and then we want ddx of the function and so we type our function x so we go x to the power of 3 go across and then we've got plus x now we don't need to put a number in here. This is for if we wanted to work out the derivative of that at a particular value, which you'd normally use when you're just doing the calculation mode. But for graphing, we don't need to do that. So we can just press that, and then if we go back up and select our function, we can now then draw it. And it will draw the derivative function. So notice this is a cubic, and what we've got on our graph is we've got a quadratic. Okay, now remember the derivative functions, okay, find stationary points when they are equal to zero. Okay, so we've found the gradient function and it says find the x value of the stationary points in these questions. So what we can do is to verify this is correct, let's just differentiate the first one. So if we just differentiate y equals x cubed plus x, so that will go to dy by dx is equal to 3x squared plus x, um, not x, sorry, 3x plus 1. So if we were to go back and get another graph, so let's go down 1. And we can graph 3x squared plus 1. We can verify that it's exactly the same function. So we'll get both functions, and they both draw in exactly the same place. So you don't just get exactly the same function. Now, if we want to find out where the stationary point is, remember, we want this value here equal to 0. Now what we will see is if you do actually the calculations, we're going to get minus 1 over 3 is equal to x squared, and we can't square root that, so there aren't any. And if you notice, our gradient function doesn't cross the x-axis at all. We can check that with a graph solve to find the root. The root is where it crosses the x-axis. Press that, and you'll see that it thinks a long time, and it doesn't come up with an answer. So that's the first question. So let's exit that. And let's go into our second question. Let's just delete this function, f1, go up. We won't delete this one. What we'll do is we'll go back in and we'll edit it. Ah, cunningly, it defaults as it, it, it equal to x for you. So we could have typed in that x. So anyway, we're going to do the next one. So we're going to get minus x squared plus 3. So I'm just going to go back, so we'll go plus... 3. And we draw the derivative function of that. Try and imagine what you think that's going to look like when we draw this. Okay, let's draw it. And hopefully you realize it was a straight line. So we get a derivative function as a straight line and we can see that it intersects at 0. Let's just do the graph solver to check that is intersecting at 0. And yes, we have a root at x equals 0. So if we were to actually calculate this, we would get so we've got y equals minus x squared plus 3. If we do do y by the x, we'll get minus 2x. And if we make that equal to 0, we can see that x equals 0, so and y equals 0. So we've got a turning point at x equals 0 and y equals 0. And it just asks us to find the x value of the stationary point, it just asks us to find the nature. Okay, we can come on to that in another video. And similarly, you can do the last one. So let's go back, just quickly go through the last one and type that out. So we've got, let's put in a bracket and let's type in x squared plus x plus 4. Close brackets and let's put that all to the power of minus 1, which is the same as 1 over that. 
and let's draw that. Right, what we can see here is we haven't got much of a graph going on. So what I'm going to do is we'll do a quick bit of maths just to check what's going on. So let's have a look at y equals um, 1 over x squared plus x plus 4. So that's all of this to the power of minus 1. I'm going to just do the chain rule, do it with chain rule in my head, or you can use quotient rule, it's up to you. Use chain rule in my head, I'm going to differentiate the bottom bit, so I'm going to get a 2x plus 1 coming out. And then I'm going to times by the power, which is minus 1. And then this all going to take another 1 off the power, gives me minus 2. So that's going to give me x squared plus 4, um, x squared plus x plus 4 on the bottom, all squared. And I've got minus 1 times the top there. So effectively, um, I'm going to have a turning point where the top equals 0. So that's where 2x plus 1 equals 0. So that's where x equals minus a half will be my turning point. So something leads me to believe that I'm going to have a turning point around here. So there will be some kind of graph where that will be crossing around here. So if it's crossing around here, then what must be the problem is, is my y-axis is too big. So go to view window. Now, if you can't work that out, then you either your y-axis is going to be too big or too small. It's going to be too small because it's off the scale, or it's going to be too big, um, like mine is, and we can't see that. So let's just go down to, I don't know, let's say try minus 1, and 1 is our values. Let's exit, now draw, and look, we get a graph. Okay, in fact, I could have taken the maximum y and minimum y less. And we do our graph solve and look for the root, Remember, this is the gradient function. We want to look for where it equals 0. Hopefully, it'll come out as minus a half. And look, there's x is equal to minus a half. So we can see now, you can use your graphical calculator to draw a gradient function of the calculator. So you, this is the graph of the gradient function, not the original functions I've been drawing here. So you can have a look at those, and you can use those to solve and find out where your turning point is.